missed you guys. What is going on, team? I'm a little bit over to one side, aren't I? We can't be having that. Come over here. Right, that looks perfect. Nailed it. 10 out of 10. Professional strummer confirmed. Look at that. Beautiful. I am representing my mark, my boy. Stone Cold Steve Austin today. I'm feeling damn good about it. Welcome, one and all. To drama time stop stop don't do it don't do it you know i would gladly do an entire show with uh me in that position just to annoy some people <laughs> i gladly would oh i missed you guys sorry there was no drama last week my son did indeed have some complications at the hospital but he's fine don't worry about it i did say he was fine he's fine he's bored He's bored. There's nothing worse than a bored child, my friends. But he is playing Mario Odyssey on the Switch and is having a blast with it as well. Keep showing me all these crazy things he's found. Like, did you know you could throw your hat? Real deep stuff. Real it's interesting things that he's dealing with. Boy! Boy, indeed, what a stream it's been. No wow for like two weeks now, I think. Something like that. And people are like, are you still playing WoW? Yes, because the observant amongst you would have noticed that I have indeed appeared in uh, the Fat Post videos recently. One of the glorious things about playing with my boys, Laws and Alex. So weird to have met those guys. <laughs> met those guys multiple times before we ever played WoW together in any way, shape, or form. Uh, but yeah, you will have seen us popping up in there. I, I like the way they include the like a clip of me dead. <laughs> like it's fucking bastards, man. Fucking bastards. Ah, 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 ah. Got him, got him, got him. But yeah, we've been doing all that beta testing uh, in BFA. A very mixed bag in old dear right now uh i think anybody who beta tested with me would probably or uh, beta tested the bosses from yesterday we have some more beta testing to do tonight on the new raid uh but the the worst boss ever like unbelievable that <laughs> how how i believe it's called the fetid something it's a big hydra thing how that made it through like that yeah that's okay <laughs> that'll do <laughs> we'll call that a boss no mother's fantastic mother is amazing mother is an absolutely amazing fight so fun loved mother uh yeah but the yeah the fetid devourer that was it jaxi was there was uh it's like guam but without any of the fun bits <laughs> it's like go on without any of the fun bits but interesting stuff going on with crazy easy bosses with like two mechanics all the way to uh kind of like a general's vesax i want to say the last the, the second to last boss in ulduar making a kind of reappearance with mechanics which look completely unpuggable uh whether or not they have decided that heroic should not be puggable because i can't see pugs Really coordinating the stuff you do on that fight. But I'm going to leave it to Loz and Alex to explain the fights too. And you can see my points of view there. And obviously I've been doing some uh, interesting videos on the YouTube this week. Which has caused quite a lot of stir. Uh, I too, I do tend to do that. Uh, we will be pushing forward. I haven't thought of a name for it. But I like doing a more detailed, researched, heavily invested video. Like once a week. I like doing that. Uh, so I'm probably going to give it a name or something. So I did the last one on Sunday, and uh, it really hit a chord with many of you, which was awesome, uh, which is the Master Looter stuff. And I have another one coming out probably on Sunday as well. I'll set a day for it, and we'll come up with a name. Uh, but I've been quiet for too long, man. Many of you saw that. <laughs> you saw right through. It's like, you know you want to talk about this stuff. And I'm like, ah, yeah, I do. But it's a little bit snowflakey in WoW at the moment, isn't it? A little bit snowflakey. Druid travel farm might be going in terms of carrying people because it's invasive or it should require consent is a thing that's happening. It's a little bit snowflakey. It's a little bit snowflakey. And that puts people like me kind of really in the firing line. I don't know if you've noticed. <laughs> I don't know if you guys noticed uh, that um, I do tend to get the, uh, the, the, the barrel end of a lot of guns when things come out but um fuck it man <laughs> who cares who fucking cares man i don't care so that stuff will be coming up here we have a web show tomorrow i believe is that right andy yeah boy we have a web show tomorrow so we can do all our triggering and stuff then uh which sounds like good times to me but that's not why you're here right now yeah consent some people find it very invasive if you uh jump on them when they're in travel farm i do agree though that travel farm with mounting should be a separate farm right I don't think that's weird. Uh, the consent thing? I don't know. Who am I to say? Now, I have an interesting story for you because not too long back, 
not too long. When are we looking at here? Like January? Yeah, like January. January, many of you pointed me to a thread on the official WoW forums. So as we know, it's fucking gold. It's absolutely crisp, full of perfection and detailed and is absolutely relevant to how the game works. Uh, and uh, <laughs> it turns out that while we were talking about these things on the channel, uh, that the person who is part of the guild of the person who made this thread is a viewer of ours. Thankfully, our reach is that wide and has written us the story of uh, how such a thread came to be. So I know you're wondering what is the thread about, but that would kind of spoil the story. But don't worry, you will find out. Uh, so let's do it in the usual fashion, shall we, ladies and gentlemen. Right, so we'll have... Cyclone. Because there has been a lot of people recently <laughs> who have noticed that a lot of people, particularly with the Master Looter issue, are um, people who it doesn't affect. <laughs> but they will fight tooth and fucking nail to make sure that these changes go through, despite having no relevance or context for the system at all. Uh, which is weird. I'm also kind of cool to see so many of you. I've done it wrong, haven't I? I'm so fucking bad. Uh, let's do that. I'm so fucking bad. We'll call it Forum Guy. I like it. Forum Guy's pretty solid. Fixed it. See? Easy. Control X. Easy game, boys. All right. You ready? Are you ready? Holler to you, preacher, and a Mr. Ghost. What? Can we all give a big clap, actually, for Andy playing Dead Space this week? Thanks, mate. It's good, though, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it is a good game. It's a good game. Looking forward. We're doing co-op next week, so if any of you enjoy our co-op streams, which I know a lot of you do, uh, we'll be having a co-op stream next week, which I'm excited for, because we've got co-op Dark Souls coming up. We've got co-op this. Mm, co-op Dead Space 3 should be a lot of fun. Anyway, and all the lovely people listening, I thought I would finally bite the dust and write you a little drama story. This story revolves around one person in particular. But first, let's set the scene a little bit, right? Let's not get ahead of ourselves. My guild is a long-standing social <laughs> raid slash raiding guild. It goes all the way back to vanilla. It's seen its shares of highs and lows, full of members old and new. It has been through many a drama. From the usual fallouts, watching good people leave and sometimes return to the more crazy side. I like having a random pug take over our <laughs> like having a random pug take over our guild's ventrilo server, or when a kid causing trouble in the guild was accidentally promoted to guild master instead of being kicked which led to him taking the bank and disbanding the guild while we were all online can we clap once more but this time much slower which way does this arrow go <laughs> which way up or down <laughs> after much panic we eventually managed to get it back it was probably the biggest drama in our guild until we faced the one and only augers augers has been the bane of my guild ever since I could remember. Way back in Wrath of the Lich King. Back in those days, our oceanic realm was shared with North America. Why is this important? Well, being a guild made up mostly of stray cunts and New Zealand, this guy was Team USA, which has an issue with time zones. What is the time difference between USA and Oceanic? What did you guys have to deal with? <laughs> something like eight hours or something stupid, right? You're all played together with eight hour different time zones. It's something fucking stupid. Many times he's complained that he has had to get up at 4 a.m. to raid. And that the guild should change its entire raid times just for him. But our raid members are all from the same time zone. And they have become busier with jobs or have children since the guild was formed. The best time we could arrange to suit everyone was 8.30 p.m. Oh, no, dude. Unless you're raiding for like two hours. Fuck that. I am out. 8.30 p.m. raiding? 
Kiss my ass, dude. Fuck me. That sucks. Augers, however. Augers. Would prefer it if we would change it so that the 16 of us could raid at 1 p.m. on a Saturday and Sunday. Which is what we used to do back in Mists of Pandaria. Back in a time when we had different people raiding and we didn't have children yet ourselves. Now, I don't know about you guys in this chat, but I cannot raid with a child annoying me. No, it's impossible. It's not possible. Help to go to the potty, maybe, or needing attention. But of course, this didn't matter to our boy Augers. Doesn't matter at all. Every time we would have a guild meeting, he would bring up the issue about how he is affected by the time at which we raid. And at every meeting, we gave the same response. It suits everyone else, Augus. If you want to raid at a different time with different people, you're welcome to make Team 2. We'll give you that. We will. But of course, Augus never managed to make his Team 2. He just wanted to raid at a different time. Now, you might be asking yourself, this is just one issue, right? What is it like to raid with Augus? Let me paint you a picture of Augus. Augers was a human warlock. He'd been a human warlock forever. He is not only a keyboard turner and a clicker, which is a thing. But you see, Augers has a big problem in his real life. A real big problem. Okay? And I don't want you guys to take the piss. Augers suffers from an affliction, which I know some of you suffer from because I've seen it firsthand. I have. I've witnessed this. It's an affliction... I hope one day you can have cured. August suffers from small desk. Yeah. It's no joke. Small desk affl afflicts. Five in ten. One in two. World of Warcraft players. And it's a bad condition. Therefore, August only had one thing to deal with. He had to play with the trackball. <laughs> Woo! Woo! You ever seen someone using a fucking trackball? It's like the stupidest shit I've ever seen in my life. <clears throat> what are you doing? Scrolling through Google. <laughs> Woo! Woo! Look at that ball go! Spin that bitch! Spin that motherfucker! Go, 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 go! <laughs> Small desk is no joke, boys, right? Small desk is not a joke. <clears throat> <laughs> Track balls, what the fuck, man? <laughs> okay. <clears throat> August has been a destruction warlock forever. We noticed that he had never changed his talents since Mr. of Pandaria and just selected new ones. And he also used Drain Life as a filler. When we asked him why, he said he felt it every raider's responsibility to not be an extra burden on the healers. And you thought he wasn't smart, right? You guys were thinking maybe this guy's a bit dumb. But think about that. Yeah? Think about it. You pop in that drain life. Healers are all good. They know they can rely on you to be a solid investment on the raid. Really solid, man. Don't need to waste any time. He's just... He's ahead of the game. And that's what... <laughs> we're all doing it wrong. <clears throat> Although, he believed... That the only issue with his DPS, which I was shocked to find out was pretty low, would greatly increase if he just got a new PC. That's what it is. It's a PC problem. Is it the player? No. Is it the small desk affliction? No. Is it the trackball? No. Simply a question of frames. More frames, more performance. No matter how much gear we gave Augers, his DPS and understanding of mechanics never improved. Yet to our disdain, he was the luckiest son of a bitch when it comes to loot rolls. Because he had been in the guild for a very, very long time, he had been given the rank of officer. <laughs> Smart. Really good, actually. Well... It's time earned, right? That's how we decide officers in a guild. What we don't do is ask people, qualifications, nothing like that. What instead it is, is based on time in guild. 
Due to his many, brackets, rather embarrassing, trade, tra trade chat recruitments, which often got our guild name incorrect. <laughs> It's not our guild, dude. <laughs> you're, you're actively recruiting for a different guild. And because of his position as officer, <clears throat> it made him very difficult to get rid of. Really doesn't. Doesn't at all, actually. Really doesn't. He's one who fully believes in the motto I know many of your chat love so very much. Social guild, social raid. I recall back in the old Siege of Orgrimmar, after several unsuccessful attempts on Thok, August thought it was an appropriate question as to ask why, why are we fighting a big dinosaur? What is the reason for us killing this boss? What has the dinosaur done against us? He persisted with this question for most of the night. Maybe he thought it was a joke. Maybe he thought it was serious. But I could tell you now, it was so irritating that we all remember it to this day. But times change. Legion. Legion has not been August's expansion. It's not. It's been very sad. It's been very sad. When our boy Cyclone stepped up to raid lead. Our man. He was determined that we were going to change the direction of this raiding guild. We're going to push. We're going to push and we're going to push hard. We're going to push progression faster with the hope of eventually stepping foot into mythic raiding. And with such expectations, everyone was expected to perform to a standard that Cyclone deemed reasonable. That's right. We're breaking out the rules, boys. Most of his expectations were the usual stuff. Have knowledge of the fights. Know what is happening. Bring food, flasks, and pots. Is this really still a requirement for some people? Can you guys be honest with me? Do you have a lot of guys who turn up without, a, like, a flask? That aren't Andy, obviously. But, like, don't understand why you would want to bring a flask. You know, shit like that. <laughs> it's just because you're going to be doing PvE for the next couple of hours. Why would I want a flask for that, right? 80% <laughs> of your guild members? Fuck me, dude fucking crazy why if just because we can't kill this boss why would i want to be more powerful while we try and kill it doesn't make any sense to me sounds very smug very smug potions are just fucking cheating remember that that was an mmo champion right potions are cheating <laughs> <laughs> fucking hell <laughs> and to ensure that people were pulling their weight right dps must be at least at least consistently achieving blue passes that's blue i don't know what percentage blue is is that 70 plus in overall or for item level with other requirements for heals and tanks but this of course is where my boy augers my boy augers's long cruisy ride through raiding had suddenly become threatened 50 plus 25 plus 50 to 75 50 plus 50 plus 50 plus he was always welcome to normal runs it's fine. You can come to normal augers. Look, we'll give you that, right? But he was never invited into heroic progression. After a lot of back and forth with Cyclone about why he was not invited to join the progress group, despite being an officer of this guild, he tried other ways to swing the odds in his favor. He started making verbal complaints to the GM Moaka. Hoping to undermine Cyclone. This did not work. To which Augers decided to send formal complaints via in-game mail. <laughs> it's in writing now, motherfucker. Try and ignore me. Try and ignore me. It's in writing. Huh? It's in writing. You've got a record of it, dude. <clears throat> However, there was a big problem. Moaka was very impressed with how the guild was progressing. And therefore stood by Cyclone's decisions as the guild was doing better than it had for many expansions. So what should Augus do? Things aren't going his way, right? Things just aren't going his way. Well, according to Augus, the next strategy was to make very snarky remarks about how poor their numbers were for last raid and then log off just before they pulled the first boss of the night. 
<laughs> I mean, this guy's been in the guild for years, right? This isn't a kid. This is not a child. This is like a, an adult. <laughs> this is an adult. <laughs> You're all gonna. I saw someone got like a, 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 a grey pass last week. <laughs> God, I'm... log off quick before it gets me. <clears throat> Sometimes he would log back on later, though. Sometimes he would log back on later. And have private chats or whisper people who weren't rude to him. Complaining about the toxic raid group. That's what's happened. It's become toxic. Unfortunately. He didn't like Cyclone's toxic attitude. He would regularly make out that he was the victim. But no one could do anything. No one really cared. <laughs> that is until one of the poor souls he decided to pester was the GM. Recently, Mawaka had yet another delightful conversation with Argus regarding this issue. To which Mawaka finally did it. He said, unfortunately, if you find the guild toxic, that it was probably time that you move on. And that ideally, to spare himself from the toxicity, he should look to move to another guild that suits his time zone. Yeah? We don't want you to be in a toxic environment. Maybe it's best you move on. You might think he left after this. He did not. He stuck around for quite some time. Just a mere two days after this polite chat, he decided to take it to the WoW forums to gain the opinion of the rest of the player base. This is you guys, right? Our boy Augus needs your help. He's suffering from small desk. And now it's time to look to you guys. All you people who are part of this community to get some help. <clears throat> he titled his thread, Warcraft Logs is a bully tool. He shared this post, but somehow managed to omit the fact that he was quoting a forum post. Oh, it's not his. Sorry, I've spoiled it. <laughs> he was sharing a forum post instead of present. He presented it as if it was his own, but we knew it wasn't. If you're familiar with this infamous post on the WoW forums, you'll know it's from a warlock who got grey passes and claimed Warcraft logs is used to bully and should be kept private. If you don't remember it or for any of you chat who doesn't know it, I have linked it for you here. Ladies and gentlemen, a reading. Warcraft logs is a bully tool. Warcraft Logs is hands down the worst thing to ever happen to World of Warcraft. It is an invasion of privacy. And you cannot make yourself not have a Warcraft Logs page if someone records that run. If you set it to private, it says a politely worded message on your page that basically means this person is too scared to show his passes because he's bad i was doing one million plus dps on fights in antorus and was getting gray passes not to mention it's not fair way to give you a score like for example when we were on imanar the soul hunter i got sleep nobody dispelled me and i died i got five gray passes because of that I don't know what that means. <laughs> Does that mean he has five great Imina logs or five runs? I, either way. <clears throat> Thanks, raid mates. That's really fair that I get a grey pass because the healers cannot dispel. I should be able to have the choice to disallow anyone from passing me. If I do one million plus DPS on fights and do all the mechanics... I should not need to be passed or anything. I've made an alt, and I'm so apprehensive to go into normal Antorus in the concern that some elitist records me in a pug, and I get a grey pass because of my 9-10 item level. I always hear people complaining about Raider.io, but Raider.io is fair. It shows your progression, your M plus score, that you can build up over time by doing more keystones. Have a low, low raider.io score? No problem. 
I'll just do low-level keystones that invite anybody and build up my score. Warcraft logs, however. Warcraft logs is like putting a camera in your bathroom. Get rid of it. If you want to kick bads, look at the DPS meters. Kick the ones dying to mechanics. Don't look at some elitist website that, for all you know, passed him grey because some stupid garbage happened in that raid. Amen. Amen. I will link that for you here. Amen. Amen, brother. I, I mean, he's not wrong. It is exactly the same as having having a camera in your bathroom. Exactly the same. <clears throat> this post-annoyed Cyclone, who was already thoroughly sick of the snide and dirty remarks Augers had been making. So he replied in fairly strong terms, stating that despite numerous attempts to explain things to you, Augers, to help you, Augers, he had never once tried to improve and expected to be carried to ahead of the curve every tier. Cyclone ended his reply with something to the effort of, I would explain it all again, but to be honest with you, you're just not worth it. Augers, of course, did reply, though. Stating he was merely quoting a forum post and didn't understand the hostility. He just thought we should be all be aware of how toxic Warcraft logs can be. Little did he know this time he had gone too far. This time he wasn't going to get to play his victim card. The discussion continued in Discord for a time with other guild members responding. And not a single one agreed with poor, just misunderstood Augers. Not long after this, Mawaka demoted Augers. Gave him a 24-hour warning that he would be removed from the guild for causing any more drama for no good reason. However, he was kicked a lot sooner. He sent a wonderful, well-written, in-game mail. It's official. He's keeping it real. To Mawaka where he stated in no uncertain terms, uncertain terms that Cyclone, he believed, was a puppet master. And not only that, a toxic puppet master. And that poor Mawaka had become his puppet. And that is where the long reign of Augers ended. For our guild, at least. He's already joined another guild, and maybe not now, but eventually he will begin to drain the soul of that guild and alter it to twist his needs. So be warned, everybody. Augers is out there. Him and his small desk might be in your guild right now. Yeah. So be afraid. Be very afraid. It's a whirlwind, folks. You know, you've got to be careful. You've got to be careful with what's out there because you never know. You never know. You never know when there could be an augers lurking somewhere near you. Right? Yeah, the desk. <laughs> Nothing worse than small desk. Small desk. Andy used to have small desk at your dad's house. Do you remember when we were youngsters? You used to suffer from small desk. I did suffer from small desk, yeah. When you've got to take the keyboard and mouse off to put the joystick on the desk. It's not funny, that. It's not funny. It's, not funny, it's that. wrong. It's a condition. It is a condition. It's racist. <laughs> racist? Wow. Churlish. <laughs> right, this is like the most elaborate, over-the-top coup that some people came up with. In history, actually. And you've got to respect it. So I need a guild name. I need a guild name, so we're gonna have Luo. Uh, there's loads of people in this. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, I'm definitely gonna struggle with these names, but we'll manage. We're not having the twat mumbles. It's not happening. <laughs> we're reserving that for Preachcom, man. <laughs> Our author describes herself as a woman of some years. Old. Yeah, mature. Probably bubbly. I'm into it. 
I'm into it. I'm into it Let's too. It. You sound like my kind of girl. Whew. Good and bubbly. <laughs> uh, okay. Let's have uh, Cortini. I'll, I'll check the guild names in a second. We're still doing names here. <laughs> Go Cougars. <laughs> Go Cougars. You know it. Um, I don't know. I'm going to just put this as exile, but I do want the chat to know that the Patreon name here is The Exiled Warlord. <laughs> and Dakota. Super. The Exiled Warlord. <laughs> Right, I think that's everybody. <clears throat> All right, so we're going with the hairy beef flaps. No, circle jerky. I like it. Circle jerky. I am my scars. The exiled warlords. <laughs> that should be the name of the guild. No, I'll leave. I'll leave the name of the guild to you guys. I think that's only fair. All right then. <sighs> The most elaborate coup of all time. Are you ready? Are you ready for the lengths people go to? Because having been a part of some of this stuff, it's pretty amazing what nerds think is a normal thing to do. <laughs> it's perfectly normal, guys. <clears throat> oh, a preacher and a hearty. Hail to ghosty. Whoa. Well met. <laughs> At your side, my lady. <laughs> my cream pie. My cream pie. And greetings to the chat from Team Usa. My husband introduced me to drama time. Well played. And while I'm working my way through all the episodes, the episodes, stories have had me in stitches. I thought I would share with you and the chat my guild's one and only major drama. I'll do my best to keep the story as short as possible, but it's a tale of treachery with heroes and villains and the damsel in distress. Was Circle Jerky the guild itself? A little bit on our villains then. Who shall be our villain? Let's have Exiled Warlord as the, as the villain. A little bit of our villains. Exiled. And Dakota. That sounds like good villain names. And some others who were involved but remain nameless so we don't have a million names across your screen. Mm, failed. Um, had been playing WoW and other games together a while before they joined Circle Jerky. I have no doubt whatsoever that the whole crew was involved in the planning and or execution of their diabolical plot. Luo had been in the guild for about two years before Exiled and his minions joined. But he fell in with that crowd, did Luo. Not a good choice in hindsight. People have their opinions about Luo's part in all this. But honestly, I want to look on the bright side. I think Luo got played and just got sucked into this world of shit. Our heroes were and still are integral integral members of the guild. Twinkie, our guild master. She's diplomatic, fair, sweet, and really invested in making the guild great. Ben and Vuta and I and officers, with a couple of others, are equally committed to making our guild a healthy one. Vuta's pretty chill, but can be firm when he needs to be. Ben can sometimes be, let's say forthright but he always comes from a good place right that just means he's rude <laughs> not sure what that really respectful line of means there it means he's rude really rude i'd like to think i'm the maternal one the nurturer the carer i try to make sure everyone feels included part of the family i guess i should mention here that we officers never throw our rank around Ours is not a guild where it's obvious who is or is not in any sort of leadership position. We prefer to lead by example, which will be relevant later. My guild has been on our server for a good bit now, about six years. We formed as a result from drama in our previous guild, so some of us have been playing... Oh, this is a guild... Where everyone left and made their own guild. We formed as a result from drama in our previous guild. So some of us have been playing together even longer than that. We're tight-knit. Synergetic. Fairly casual. PvP guild, mate. Yeah? Casual PvP guild. And while we do regular RBGs a couple of times a week and win our fair share, we will never, never be spoken of in a way of reverence tones reserved for the truly elite. We're not up to that standard, boys. We're all right. We're good mates. We win some fights. We lose some fights. 
and we're all right with it. We just want to unwind. We just want to unwind after a hard day of being adults with camaraderie and wants of bloodshed and getting sheeped. We're always on the lookout for quality peeps to add to our little family. We ask only one thing. And I think everybody in this chat right now can probably adhere to this one rule. Don't be an arsehole. That's it. You guys can do that, right? And if you can do that, you can join the guild. You too can be a circle jerky. Just don't be an arsehole. That's all we ask. Apparently, being a small to medium-sized guild of laid-back, working people, led by a mere woman of all things, made us the perfect target for a takeover. And that, my friends, is where our little story begins. It all started towards the end of 20 16 but finally came to the head about a year ago, in April. We had recently added... I can't remember that name. The Exiled Warlord. A guy who seemed to be a good fit. He was friendly, active in chat and on comms, and seemed like an all-round decent kind of guy. Little did we know. Now, I should mention at this point, was, this isn't your run-of-the-mill, let's just overwhelm this guild, take it over through sheer numbers type of thing. It turned out that these guys had a multi-phase, coordinated, tactical plan of which she believes, our author believes, looked a little something like this. This is what she believes took place before the exiled warlord joined this guild. We found out that this was their plan. All right, let's rate the plan. Wait till I've finished. There's four phases, right? And I want a score out of 10. Phase one was the inclusion of PVE into our guild dynamic. Phase two was to replace our comms with their own comms. Phase three was the integration of a conspirator into the PvP side of things. And phase four was to undermine the leadership with the ultimate goal of total conquest. <sighs> Out of ten. I know what you and your chat are saying, do you? Presumptuous. Who are we that we should be the focus of such a diabolical plot? Did they perceive us as weak? Were we the slowest moving wildebeest of the herb? Did we just fit the criteria they were looking for? Right size, etc. That's something we may never know. We may never know why. But they wanted our guild and everything that we had. Phase one of the plan. Here we go. We're going through the plan. Let's go raiding. The Exiled Warlord suggested that we add a little PvE to this mix. And some of the guild were up for it. It was getting to the end of the PvP season and people were open to expanding into new areas with friends. He said he would help get a bit of a raid group together, right? I got some friends. They'll help us out. It would be fun, he said. He brought some friends to round out the group and took those interested into the Emerald Nightmare. Now, I personally am not a big fan of the PvE. Nothing at all against raiders. It's just not my cup of tea. It's because you're bad. Who agrees with me? Who's with me, boys? It's because you're bad. Because you're a girl. Understood. I did go on a run or two and we did have fun. The exiled warlord. And his friend, Cortini were patient in teaching us poor pvpers poor pvpers that's all we were mechanics and we all had a good laugh at just how bad we were those that continued to go and get better and it was decided that some regular raid nights were in order right let's get a schedule going what about tuesdays yeah everybody like a tuesday i like a tuesday great a regular day is always a good idea and then it became how about Tuesdays and Wednesdays? Can't clear it all on a Tuesday. Let's put a Tuesday and a Wednesday in there. What about a Thursday as well? Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Or Tuesday, Thursday. What do you think? Just a couple of days? 
Sure, sure, sure. We're starting to get into a calendar. It's a bit full for people with jobs and families and kids and whatnot. So RBGs ended up getting dropped just to one night a week. Just until the start of a new season, right? Just until then. Mind you, we'll add more PvP back in when the new season starts, right? That'll be what we'll do. Gradually, of course, the exiled warlords started bringing in more people. The big recruitment commenced for people to join the raiding group. Some of them were people that he played with before, both in WoW and in other games. There was a core team starting to form. They got there ahead of the curve Gul'dan. PvE started to dominate the green. Now we're beginning to look like a PvE orientated guild with a little bit of PvP on the side. Not exactly what we'd been in for the last five years. Not quite a red flag yet, of course, because achievements were popping up. The guild was doing well. But we should have seen it coming. We should have seen it. Phase two began innocently enough. Discord hadn't really taken off yet. And for whatever reasons, we weren't using Mumble anymore. So the time being, we would use Curse Voice. Now, there is a comment here saying, go ahead, chat, take the piss all you want. Now, I haven't used Curse Voice, so I don't know if it's bad. <laughs> I have no idea. Do you know? Never heard it before. <laughs> um, <laughs> there's a lot of scared faces turning up, so... I'm guessing it's not that great. I'm guessing it's not that great. But it was free! Everyone already had it installed, and it made things easy at the moment. So the Exiled Warlord suggested, let's give Discord a try. He had a server. He was more than happy to give us a channel to use, temporarily, of course, to see how he liked it before committing to a whole guild-wide change. Let's just give it a try, right? Me and you will just give it a try. Again, in hindsight, this is another red flag, but he'd been in the guild a little bit by then, and he also had invited a lot of players. And we figured he was just being helpful, right? A very helpful member of the team. So we had our little Discord channel. But then the red flag appeared. One day he rescinded Twinkie, the guild master, and the other officer's admin-type privileges for the guild's channel. wasn't cool. I have to give MCT his due here. He called Exile Warlord out straight away. He was opposed to using Exile Warlord's Discord from the get-go, as it was free and we could just make our own anyway. But Exile Warlord and his crew had played their parts well. And for some reason, I think we're all a bit guilty of this, a lot of our players were so lazy that they didn't want to add yet another Discord server to, to their list. Because it might be difficult to find people. Right? <laughs> I'm not having two. Oh, come on, man. There might be people in one. There might be people in the other. I'm, a, I'm a supposed to... We're already here now. We're already here now. Like, why do we have to have another one? <laughs> truth. Hot truth. I'm not doing two discord servers jesus christ two voice comms it's crazy phase three was underway time to take out the pvp while this gradual shift to pve was taking place mct and i were working on keeping pvp alive i'm not by any means god gift god's gift to leading rbgs but i'm always here and always willing to step up when needed more often than not we ended up running with a general frankencomp not exactly ideal, but we were decent players in our own right, and we floated around 1850,000. Towards the end of Legion Season 2, the exiled warlord invited ooh, Cortini. Cortini to the guild. Let's use Cortini. Exiled warlord really talked him up. Cortini was a god tier PvP. -er. He was going to be the answer to our guild's pvp prayers apparently he was all about pvp and we were so excited to meet this monster player mct had been leading most RG rbg nights but sometimes he wasn't available so as i would step in as best i could when i could 
Again, I'm not great by any means. The exiled warlord and Cortini and one or two of his crew started joining our RBGs. It got to the point that if MCT was even five minutes late logging in, Exile Warlord would form up a group without him and more often than not would, surprise, surprise, have no room for MCT. Exiled and I, Exiled, I found out later, would whisper MCT after matches, win or loss, apologizing for our performance. Like he was doing MCT a favor. So here we are. We're toddling along with RBGs. Cortini thinks that we have potential, as he wrote in a forum post. Potential to maybe be a wonderful PvP team. I mean, we are a complete scrub player, so I can see it. He starts making noise about time to push. If we want to get anywhere, we must push. And we must push together. We must push our rating. Discusses it in Discord... When Twinkie and the officers weren't around. Somehow talks Luo into making a poll on the good book about it. So that we can all queue in. More discussion. And it is decided that the environment needed to have a guild group of that caliber isn't really conducive to the low toxicity vibe that we want to have as a guild. It is discussed that in order to have a good PvP guild, we may need to invite people who have a little bit of toxicity about them. <laughs> Look. <laughs> you want to get good at PvP? This uh, fairy tale wonderland you're running with, that's not going to cut it. No. Nah. If you want to get good at PvP, we're going to have to bring in some real heroes. We're going to have to bring in a little bit of toxicity. I'm not going to lie. It's going to get rough. It's going to get... But we need to bring in some killers. We need to bring some killers in. It's going to happen that way. <clears throat> <We've> <laughs> I, love that. I love that this actually happens. Like, look, forewarning, it's going to get a bit bad. <clears throat> but it was allowed that he was allowed to have a push group invite on the calendar with whatever guildies or non-guildies he desired and the guild would support him. He made such a group, invite only, and was satisfied. Satisfied, I suppose. MCT continued to run a guild group. I ran a fun PvP group once a week for those who weren't invited to the newly named real team. <laughs> or for whatever reason, couldn't make it to the real team's run. Because as I said, we're a community. We're all a big family. And I didn't want to see any one of our members get left out in the cold. So kind. I should interrupt myself, Mr. Preacher, for a moment to say that as someone who's mained an enhancement shaman since my first of the 61 TBC talent points, even when we sucked, I understand that I'm not always going to be a part of what we could describe as an optimal comp. But as I said, we weren't chasing rank 1 dragon, and I do earn my keep. Just putting it out there, right? So a conversation ensues. The exiled warlord wants a word. He proposes something to me. If I was willing to go to elemental, maybe he could help me out and get me a spot in the real team. Now I love me some PvP. I'm all for getting in as much RBG time as I can. I'm all for being the best player I could be. So with a sense of loss, I agreed. I switched over to Elemental. I studied the spells and priorities. I watched videos. I signed up for Skill Cap to learn as much. Is Skill Cap still around? No way. Really? Real talk? Hold on. I remember Skill Cap from way back in the day. No shit. There it is. Ooh, it does League of Legends now. Wow. Look at this. Crazy. That's awesome. Top notch. I like it. It's bigger than ever. Awesome. That's cool. Cool. Good to know. I like their videos. I signed up for skill cap to learn as much as I could about being an elemental master. I gave up enhancement entirely for a handful of weeks and took my sorry ass to the BGs and arenas to practice. 
I kept Cortini updated on my progress. He was encouraging and said that soon I'd be able to join the real team. I never once did get that spot, though. Was I salty about it? Maybe a little. They never got much higher with their new real team than we did with our guild run and fun run, which made a pretty part of my heart feel a little better. But phase one and two flew under the radar for a couple of months. It was a long con they were going for, looking at our guild bank and all our goodies to take for themselves. And these guys were nothing if not patient. Phase three was the last piece they needed to place to implement phase four. And it had been implemented seamlessly. Due to IRL circumstances, the guild was a bit light on officers. We don't just up and promote people for the sake of having officers. One does not keep a guild friendly, drama free, for over half a decade by just promoting anyone to officer, or goes. We didn't need many more officers. Just one more would do us with all the new people we've been bringing in with the new PvE focus and the PvP. So Twinkie and the officers started thinking about who was the best addition. Who was the most trustworthy candidate to join the leadership of our ranks? It came down to two people. MCT had been in the guild almost three years at this point, had proven himself a valuable member of our guild. He brought experience to RBGs, but never came across as, oh, I'm so great, y'all should be so grateful for me. Look at my logs. <laughs> Indeed, he was quite the opposite and was genuinely interested in making us better. The exiled warlord, though. He was extremely active, almost never sleeping. He set up raids, led the raids, did calendars, etc. He'd been there for a couple of months now. He was always talking to Twinkie about ways of improving the guild. And trying to fill every day of the calendar with something to keep the whole community active. He suggested lots of things like PvP meetings to discuss comps. PvE meetings to discuss raid setups. And guild meetings about the overall direction of the guild and so on. On a weekly basis. <laughs> what the fuck? On the surface, these would be good officer qualities. However... All of his improvements seem to center around getting his people taken care of first and using out-of-guild people sometimes and making the guild different than what we wanted to do. Twinkie, the other officers, and I discussed our two candidates and MCT got the nod. While we don't announce we are seeking new officers or tell candidates that they are being considered before being offered the position, I think we all know that the exiled warlord was hoping that he was going to get that role. If not eventually. Not much longer after that, Vooter, who'd been in the guild a number of years, returned after an absence of about six months. He'd been an officer before, a damn good one too. It was only right that he regained his officer rank. This was not done in secret. I mean, the system announces these things in bright yellow letters, but apparently neither the exiled warlord or any of his little crew were online at the time. At this point, there are a bit of steady raiding going on. We're all used to seeing the Exile Warlord's Discord. He'd even renamed the server to the Circle Jerky. How thoughtful of him. Season 3 was just starting up. And Cortini had a regular RBG real team for us. MCT had another RBG team. Things seem to be going pretty smoothly. Guild was a little divided, but we're all doing well. It looks like it's all going to plan. But the final phase... The final phase. The guild leadership was about to come into play. I suspect that the warlord was less than pleased about being passed over for officer. While I was not privy to the conversations he had with his little crew, I posit he made his displeasure known to them, and I suspect they agreed that he had in fact been robbed. Little comments started popping up in the green here and there and in Discord about how guild leadership was clicky. That only cared about each other and not the rest of the team or the guildies. Or that new people were excluded. People were starting to get antsy, snappy. Ill will was fermenting in our happy little family. Twinkie received a whisper from Warlord's ex. The ex told her that Warlord had been looking for a mid-sized guild with the sole intention of taking it over. But was it true? Or was it just drama from a jilted ex-lover? 
Twinkie told us officers about it, but we were skeptical. I mean, seriously, some girl just turns up and says that this is all going on. Who would do that? Who would spend this long trying to take over a guild and get everything sorted? However, it did seem to fit in with what was going on up until this point. An example at one point, it was suggested that any raid group contained no more than one officer. There were Discord private message shenanigans showing up with screenshots. We found out that the Warlord and company had been talking shit about MCT's little RBG team and the whole push rating time. We found out that Warlord's group was telling Luo that the leadership was bashing him privately, calling him names and saying that he was a useless raid member. They did their very best to use him as the conduit to create a mutinous environment. And I honestly believe that Luo was naive enough to be used like that and it ended very badly for him. There was a lot of he said, she said flying around. Twinkie and all those officers needed to jump into action and deal with this before it blew into a guild damaging shitstorm. We spent way more time than most would deciding what are we going to do? And what would you guys do? You've got a group of people, maybe 10 or so, that are looking to try and take over your guild. You've been there for five years. But they have power. They could actually stop all the progress your guild has made. What do we do? What do we do? We wanted to settle the matter behind the scenes, not make it public, not all over guild chat so that members would think that we were some sort of drama-filled guild. <laughs> Kick them. You guys are murderous, man. You guys are absolute killers. Fuck them. It got to the point that Vooter and MCT were ready to just up and kick them. But Twinkie? Twinkie and I suggested that we go about this a little bit more diplomatically. <sighs> the girls are going diplomatic! The boys just want to murder! The boys just want to pull the miniguns! The girls are deciding, let's go for a diplomatic way. <sighs> the boys want blood. I felt it would be healthier for the guild in the long run if we took the high road and let them hang themselves with their own rope. Oh. See, lads, this is why the girls always win. <laughs> it's <fu> A girl's <laughs> diplomacy is more like strategic murder <laughs> that you don't realize you're doing. And this is why we'll never win. We're fucked. We're fucked from the start. Because <laughs> we're screwed. We're totally screwed. We just want to dive in, feet first. Dive in the mud, right? Take a picture of it. It'll be funny. Uh, no, the girls have got a tactical plan. We wanted them to hang themselves with their own rope. I didn't trust these guys not to take the drama to trade chat in an effort to drag us through the mud. We did agree that the first order of business should be making a guild discord under the administration of guild leadership. Our next order of business was to lock down the guild bank in case they made a run for it. Done and done. All right, so we put the borders up. We changed the comms. Preach, chat. I can't even begin to describe what a nightmare this whole thing was. Leadership met with each other. Warlord's group did the same. The two groups clashed on occasion. Discussions, Skype, Discord calls went on into the wee hours of the morning more than once. It got to the point that we didn't even want to log in anymore. We weren't spending hard-earned money and gold on subs for this. A less dedicated leadership would have just said fuck it and started a new guild, but that would have been them winning. This is what they wanted. This was our guild, and we were going to have to protect it no matter what. Here I offer your chat a visual analogy for your viewing pleasure. <laughs> Okay, so what we have here, ladies and gents, <clears throat> is we have, these are the noobs, right? These are the noobs, right? These are the guys who saw a message in trade chat and decided to join the guild, right? These are the officers. <laughs> these are the officers of the guild protecting the shitters, right? So what we have here is gray passes and trackballs, right? ahead of the curve and now we have warcraft logs circling right warcraft logs there it is okay so it's up it's up to the ahead of the curvers to protect the trackballs 
from the evil Warcraft logs, which is circling the prey. Don't, and this, well, these, yeah, these are the trackballs and small desks right here, right? These are those guys. So we got this, boys. We got this. It's in the bag. It's all good. Daddy. Yeah, boss. I got you some, some flowers. You got me some flowers? That's awesome, mate. Can I come and see them in two minutes? Come on. Excellent. Nice gruffalo top, though. A mutual friend of ours outside of the guild. Let's call it... I haven't got another name. We'll go with uh, Foggy Bear. Foggy Bear offered to serve as mediator between the two groups. <laughs> he valiantly tried to serve as an impartial go-between. I'll give Foggy Bear credit. He gave it his all, that lad. He really did. He maintained confidentiality... What are you doing? What are you doing? Just kick them. Just kick them. He maintained confidentiality on both sides and did not run gossip between the two groups. He met with us and met with them separately and all of us together. I do recall during one of our mediation meetings, the warlord, or one of his minions, expressed concern about the damage it would do of having to rebuild the guild if one side were to leave and take the whole group with them. We thought how sweet of him to be so concerned for us. I told them, we have been around for a really long time and we'll be around a long time after they go. It finally came to the head. One night. Lua raided with the team when it first died and received a good portion of the loot. He got pretty self-confident, corrupted, twisted, and figured he could make it in a mythic raiding guild on the Alliance. So Lua just up and left. When he didn't get a spot in their group, he offered to come back and help our raid team as having been in a <laughs> mythic raid guild. <laughs> Failed my trial in the mythic guild. But I can come and help you guys because I'm technically an ex-Mythic Raider now. So. <laughs> what a fucking baller. What a pro. Hey, 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 hey. Technically, I'm still an ex-Mythic Raider. Yeah, that's right. You failed your trial, though. Doesn't matter. I was there. I was in the raid. <clears throat> I'm, in I'm entitled now. Personal loot. Can't take that off me, can you? You can't take away my Mythic Raid experience it's personal loot baby it's all mine they got him shit <laughs> him leaving the team as he was the main focus of a lot of gear brought the team back because he had gotten a lot of loot this didn't sit well with a good portion of our new raid team including ben the co-raid leader i don't blame them though get gear and leave not a good way to win friends and influence people Apparently, it's totally fine, <laughs> from what I'm told. Vuter had come back during that brief time Lou was trying to make his way on the blue side. He caught up with his gear pretty quick. And Ben had asked him to join the raid group. So our boy Vuter went into the raid and everything was well. At the end of the raid, Warlord brought up in Discord the topic of letting Lua's character back in the guild. Because he does have now some mythic experience. <laughs> but Vuter, loyal loyal vooter said that lewis switching faction after getting all that loot was wrong he has a bad attitude he should not be let back in vooter felt that since an opinion was asked for he would offer one he gave his opinion as objectively as he could but lua was part of this little rebellion he was part of their little team and warlord took it personal as did his friends the conversation got heated Vuta was defending himself, in his opinion, and the other raid members who agreed Lua was no longer to be trusted. After being yelled at called names, Vuta felt that the conversation wasn't going anywhere and could potentially cause further damage. Vuta whipped out his old card. He simply said, I'm going to pull rank here, boys, as an officer. This conversation is over. Sunglasses. You could have heard a pin drop followed by scoffs and the dings of people leaving that discord. And that was when <laughs> that was when the warlord and his crew realized that Vuta, a guy who was not even around when they joined, was actually an officer.
and they weren't happy about it. It was the final straw for everyone. Names were called. One minion wished that Voodoo would get that good old cancer. Get a cancer, bro. And just go and die. Lua couldn't figure out how he got himself in such a mess and actually started crying on Discord. <laughs> the leadership at this point just couldn't give a fuck. Our mediator, Foggy Bear, brokered one final meeting between the groups to be held on his own Discord server, which he declared was neutral ground. <laughs> we need a neutral Discord ser server, all right? Neutral ground. As it was to be held the following Monday when everyone would be available. This meeting never took place. Warlord and his friends G quit and formed their own guild the next day. But not before asking everybody, everybody, for everything they had ever put down in the guild bank to be taken out and brought to them. They took about six members total. Including a couple of longtime guild members who just wanted to raid and enjoyed it. Some of their crew got kicked, admittedly. And Foggy Bear kept tunes in both guilds for a small while, while the transition took place. What a guy. What a legend this guy is. Foggy Bear, what a hero. What an absolute hero. <laughs> Lua was asked to take a break uh, from their guild and go out and expand his horizons, was the message we heard he told. And you know what? We wish them well. Breathe the sigh of relief that this toxic crew and had gone and which and breathe the sigh of relief and went back to our happy little community. The guild did some raiding after that. They got seven out of nine heroic tomb before they stopped. <sighs> Fallen avatar though, bro. Now we are back to being a tight knit, fairly casual PvP guild. This was the coup that never was. We found out later that they had tactically planned to take it over after someone had seen our guild bank, which was full of stuff and money. Thank you for sticking with me through this tale that ended up longer than I wanted to be. And I want to be sure that you guys understand that all this took place over a period of six months with them trying to take over the guild. P.S. Six months. For gold! Six months! Raid teams! PvP teams! For a guild bank! <laughs> what are you doing with your time? Six months? Six months was the plan. This is the strategy, and it failed. It just didn't work. God, USA for the win. America. Mer it's, the, it's the long con, man. The six months of long con. <sighs> P.S. One of our members who left with them whispered Twinkie a couple of months later, apologizing for calling her and us crazy and paranoid bitches. <gasps> Sus for suspecting that the warlord was anything but the clear hero of our story and admitted we were right warlord's new guild only lasted three weeks and last i heard most of them do not play wow anymore and to them i say one more little meme from our author <laughs> i bid you a fond farewell farewell felicia a fond farewell indeed <sighs> six months fucking hell ladies and gentlemen that does bring us to the end of drama but there's a web show tomorrow i have ray testing tonight all the wild be a face stuff we can catch up on will be tomorrow and all those opinions what up wife are you gonna pick james up or do you want me to go uh do you want to go because i'm just wrapping up i'll go i'll go i'm finishing now ladies and gentlemen have a wonderful weekend if you're not coming but we will be here tomorrow with the raunchier show uh ray testing i think starts jacks 9 p.m my time I think something like that. I think anybody know when the raid testing starts? UK time, not CEST. I want it in British time. All right. It's GMT, y'all. GMT. Everyone's gone now, aren't they? They suck. <laughs> yeah, suck. Bye, Felicia. Bye. 9 p.m. my time. Thank you very much. All right. So it'll be around then. See you later, boys. Be good. Bye bye. <laughs>